So we have looked at functions with their continuity being localized, meaning we talked about functions being local at a point. So similarly, it's convenient to think of open sets as being generated by things from a given point. We have already defined what a neighborhood is and what a basis is. The neighborhood basis are sets which will give you neighborhoods of a point. Okay, so specifically, uh, so let x be a topological space. So topological space as usual. And a basis meant they are open sets so that everything comes from those. A neighborhood basis means given any point, we have open sets so that all neighborhoods are generated by these. This means, I mean, this is true for if you take the whole basis as well and take points in it, but it's often convenient to be more specific because in practice, what you know is what are points close to a given set. So, well, a couple of ways of formalizing is not especially standard, but they all broadly amount to the following. Okay, so a neighborhood, neighborhood basis. basis for x is a collect is well it's a collection of collections so associates to each uh, point x in x a collection what uh, uh, let me call it nx of let me as well say open sets or even of neighborhoods of x such that if I have any open set containing x for all w containing a capital X open such that x belongs to w ah, and not V. Well, let's call this V, actually. I've been tending to use W for basis. So let's call it for V open, such that X belongs to V. There exists W in the neighborhood NX, such that W is contained in V. And let me remark, because we said of neighborhoods of X, we know, or we also have, from the above conditions because it's a neighborhood x belongs to wx and wx is open. So I could also have stated this as simply nx is a collection of subsets of x such that each of them is open, each of them contain x and given any open set containing x, we have that uh, there exists a, given any open set containing x there uh, exists a W in the neighborhood basis, which is contained in V. Okay, and it also contains X. Well, they all contain X. So, what do we know? They generate the topology in the following sense. This is a theorem very similar to what we have seen, and they also control continuity. But first, let's see how they generate topology. Well, V contained in X is open. This is very similar to what you see with the basis, if and only for all X in V there exists w in nx such that uh, w is contained in v. And the proof should be very similar to the previous ones. So I can be quicker, though fully detailed, with by just by cutting motivation. So one way, suppose v is open, open, and x belongs to v. Okay, uh, w exists. To n x exists. This is just by definition of neighborhood basis. Okay, and conversely, suppose we have the condition v is open. Conversely, I've just assumed the right hand side is true as v is going to be the union of all x in v, w uh, conversely, 
I think this is confusing if I don't spell it out. So let's spell it out. Suppose V is in. So suppose we know V is contained in W, uh, not WX, but X itself. And we know that W uh, and for all X in V, we have the right hand side. There exists W in an X such that W is contained in V. Okay, then V equals following the same trick we have seen many times. We take the union over all points of W X. Okay, now each W X is contained in V, so their union is contained in V. But conversely, the point any point X in V is contained in W X, and hence is contained in the right hand side. And so this is open because the each as each W X is open. So let's look at an example quickly before we look at the condition for a theorem. So for a metric space, which we'll take as X with D and of course I mean the corresponding topology and uh, we look at an X. Now we are looking at, well you can obviously guess we want to look at balls, but we'll just look at balls at radius, uh, sorry, centered around X of radius R, R greater than zero, forms a neighborhood basis. Okay, I will draw a picture and leave the proof as an exercise. So what is the picture here? I have, what do I want to show? I want to show this condition. So firstly, these are open, that is by definition. So what we want to show is that if I have X and I have a V open which contains X, then it contains a point in the neighborhood basis. And we have to do the same thing we did before. And which is that if I have an open set, by definition, there is a basic open set. <sighs> My picture has become a bit too small. So you can't see things here. Uh, let me take, so, so we have, a ball by definition, but not necessarily one centered at X. It may be centered at some point R. And we have seen that by using the fact that X is in this ball, we can find a smaller ball, which is yellow here, which is barely visible. But you can see that that ball is contained in this ball using the triangle inequality. This is a proof we have seen twice before, at least. Uh, when we looked at continuity criteria for metric spaces. And indeed, if we had abstracted, we would have just proved it here instead and used the next result there. Okay. So before stating the next result, one more thing is uh, the sets WX in NX are called basic neighborhoods. So members of a basis are called basic open sets and members of a neighborhood basis are called basic neighborhoods of S. Okay, so what else do we know? The use of this is that we can prove continuity by checking only for basic neighborhoods. Okay, so F from X to Y is continuous. Okay, so suppose we are given neighborhood basis for X and Y. Okay, so then F is continuous at X, at a point little x, at X in X. If and only if for all basic neighborhoods VY of Y which is F of X there exists a basic neighborhood uh, Wx of x such that if I look at the image of f of Wx, this is contained in Vy. This is the same picture of continuity. We have here x and here y and we have a point little x and we have a point y which is f of x. But instead of considering an arbitrary open set, it is sufficient to consider a 
smaller open set I mean a specific kind of open set that which is in the neighborhood basis and instead of asking for an open set we can ask for more a specific thing which is a basic open set here so that the image of this ends up inside here okay of course containing y okay you'll notice that one half of each side is going to be automatic so in we are asking for less and we are asking for fewer open sets continuity gives you something for every open set so one half will be automatic there but on the other hand we are demanding more here okay so without further ado we will see what exactly uh, the two this parts is so in each side one we have to show two sides of uh, i mean we have to we have two cases in x and y where we are taking basic neighborhoods and in each case this will simply be a weaker statement uh, for one half okay the, which half depends on which implication we are proving uh, just one comment what if we are not given a neighborhood basis for x and y we can consider all the mixed versions we can take all open sets containing a point as being a neighborhood basis so we can apply this where we just take for uh, vy to be just all open sets containing y alternatively if we have a neighborhood basis for y we can take wx to be just all neighborhoods of x Okay, so this strictly contains a few uh, the earlier definition of continuity. If we took simply all open sets containing a point as being the neighborhood basis, and that is certainly a neighborhood basis. Okay, so let's see. Suppose f is continuous at x. We'll get a proof very similar to many we have seen continuous at x. Okay, and let. Uh, what is it called vy be as above okay as vy is open okay so there exists let's call it u containing x open x in u such that such that we have f of x uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So the x belongs to u and f of u is contained in vy. Okay. And by definition of uh, neighborhood basis, okay, what we have is that uh, by definition of neighborhood basis, there exists wx in the neighborhood system of x and so uh, which is I've just called it a basic neighborhood here there exists basic neighborhood wx such that x belongs to wx and wx is contained in u hence f of wx is contained in vy Now to clarify the earlier remark, uh, on the y side we didn't use anything about vy other than it's open. So it's actually uh, restricting having the condition for fewer open sets on y is actually simply making it a weaker statement. But we had to do a little work on the x side. Conversely, it, on the x side things will be automatic. Okay, but uh, with, so suppose for all vy basic neighborhood there exists wx such that f of wx is contained in vy as before okay so what we have to show is we show continuity continuity at this same point okay so namely so let v contained in y be open such that y which is f of x is in v then by definition of neighborhood basis there exists vy contained in v uh, basic neighborhood of y okay so this is where we had to use the hypothesis by hypothesis for this specific vy 
there exists wx but the fact that it's wx which will will not be used but all we know is that it is open all we need is that it's open wx open x belongs to wx such that if i look at f of wx that is contained in vy which in turn is contained in v as needed okay so this has meant that we need we can uh, add, localize things and we can only look at basic open sets okay this is useful because very often uh, what is natural to think of when we are specifying a topology is what are points close to a given point so what you can define at our basic neighborhoods at different scales and the scales need not even be real numbers that is in the case of metric space there could be a much more bigger notion of scales in some sense not necessarily even an ordered set but a nice enough partially ordered set at more and more refined scales but uh, still focused at a single point and then we derive openness from that thing say, focused at a single point so neighborhood bases are useful and if our topology is specified that way it is convenient to check also in terms of these sets only